speaks student. Thoreau, all by himself, Alashma. Have you ever longed for the simple life? Have you ever wanted to trade in your high flutin gadgets for a hoe, a garden, and a green thumb? Yeah, we haven't either. But there are those who think that our society is too busy, too complicated, and disconnected from nature. Take, for example, Henry David Thoreau, who dropped everything so he could go live in the forest for two years. Oh no! Thoreau wanted a place where he could write in peace. And where he could live out his fantasy of simple living and self-sufficiency. So, in 1845, he decamped to Walden Pond. It's true that Thoreau spent a lot of time wandering through the woods, communing with nature. <coughs> Apparently, he had a Disney princess period, where he sang to small forest creatures and carried on entire conversations. After winter, these trees will be so relieved. <laughs> However self-sufficient Thoreau imagined himself to be, he wasn't really a loner. His cabin in Walden Woods was situated on property owned by his BFF, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Because he was still within spitting distance of his hometown of Concord, Massachusetts, Thoreau continually received invitations to dinner parties and barbecues and potlucks and square dances. Yeehaw! He went to all these events, of course. Just because you're living the simple life doesn't mean you have to say no to free food. In fact, Thoreau was so not removed from civilization during his stay on Walden Pond that one day he managed to run into his friendly neighborhood IRS agent. After refusing to pay his taxes, Thoreau ended up in jail. Now that's self-sufficiency you can admire. While Thoreau never really achieved the simple life of which he was so enamored, Walden, the book that chronicles his experience in the woods. Has inspired many people to dream of living off the land, off grid, as it were today. The modern movement towards self-sufficiency is called homesteading. Think for a moment about that term. Do primitive cabins in the middle of the vast prairie come to mind? Does watching your herd of cattle freeze to death or your crop blow away in a dust storm occur to you? Do you think of horrible illnesses like smallpox and dysentery? Yeah, those obstacles were what American homesteaders of the past had to overcome. Today's homesteaders, whether they live in the country or in an urban area, make products to sell at farmers markets and may have access to high-end gear like solar panels. They have ATM cards, cars, and can go buy a pint of Ben and Jerry's whenever they want. Wanting to be more self-reliant is admirable, of course, but modern homesteading isn't as straightforward as it seems. If you're keeping a blog about your homesteading adventures while baking a cake in an electric oven and running your whites through the dryer, can you really say you're unplugged from civilization? Can you truly say you're enjoying the simple,、uh, self-sufficient life? This was the same problem Thoreau encountered. He was kind of, sort of, not really off the grid during his stay on Walden Pond. Sure, he got back in tune with nature, gathered the material for a book that really does have some interesting things to say. But he didn't achieve the brutal self-sufficiency of those pioneers who homesteaded places like Kansas and North Dakota. Reaching that level of self-sufficiency would have required more than a quiet vacation by a New England pond.